Okay, pause YouTube, Six Foot Hex here. Have for you guys today an extremely good and close Yu Yu battle I had against my buddy Deneki. His channel link and stuff will be down below. He also does upload Wi Fi battles. Of course, if you guys do enjoy the video, make sure to hammer arm that like button down below. Today's team is a team that I based around Mega Steelix, which is actually pretty cool. If you want to try this team out, a link to it will be down in the description below. So, going into this matchup, if you couldn't tell from Deneki's team, he's definitely got a rain team, which I thought was a little bit funny because it wasn't until like maybe five or like six turns into the game I was like oh holy crap that can be Mega Swampert and not regular Swampert so I have to definitely watch out for Swampert considering that in the rain it can definitely put him to work and I literally have no switch into Specs Primarina at this point we should all know Specs Primarina is always gonna be a threat okay <laughs> so he ends up leading off with the secretaries as I'm gonna be leading off with my Serena turn one I'm gonna go straight for the U-turn because of the good chance that he's either gonna want to go for the Volt Switch or predict me to switch into my Steelix or just hard switch out like he does here as as he brings the fortress, turns out that he's got the red card and red cards me into my Steelix, which wouldn't be entirely too bad except for the fact that I really can't do anything to fortress. So knowing that fortress can't typically do anything to Buzzwool, I decided to switch that in and hoping that maybe he doesn't have the bolt switch, I will be able to get up a free substitute and then I can smack something in the face with a focus punch. As he actually stays in here, I thought that maybe he was going to try and get up another layer of T-spikes or just a regular layer of spikes. Actually, the fact that he's got T-spikes is extremely annoying because I also have a sub calm mind Raikou along with this uh, sub punch uh, bug Lesnar here which means T spikes are going to be very very annoying especially if one of those two gets toxic so he decides to switch into his tornadoes I am not adamant max attack on this buzzwall but I do know that this focus punch is still going to be doing a solid chunk of damage to his tornadoes as he goes straight for the hurricane not gonna lie kind of wished he did miss so I could have maybe gone for another focus punch but hey it is 70 accuracy so you're bound to hit most of them as I do a solid 51% to that tornadoes which is absolutely amazing and as much as I would love to stay in here and maybe expect him to go for the rain dance predicting me to switch out I'm really not in a position to do that so I decided to hard switch directly into my Steelix here as he does make the awesome play and knows I'm not gonna stay in to take a hurricane and he does go for the rain dance uh, this is fine unless he's got focus blast I'm not entirely too concerned about this tornadoes at all considering that this is a relatively specially defensive mega steelix actually I did add a bit more spa death bulk to the steelix uh, than this original battle because this hurricane still does a solid chunk of damage like I was really surprised by how much damage the hurricane actually did either way though it's fine as I get up my stealth rocks I really wished I had a heavy slam there but I really expected him to u-turn out into his swampert or potentially into his fortress as he goes for the u-turn here actually funny enough I did not see him go for u-turn this turn and that comes to play a role later in this battle I thought that he actually hard switched out directly into a swamper here so at this point I'm thinking okay so he probably doesn't have u-turn on his tornadoes so just keep that in mind as I go for the heavy slam I still do a solid like 10% to the incoming swamper obviously he can definitely go for the waterfall here and because he had t-spikes on his fortress I'm expecting him for it to probably have rocks as well so on the off chance that he does just go straight for the waterfall which is his best play honestly he could have also maybe gone for the earthquake but I'm pretty sure on the rain waterfall does more damage switching directly into my Serena was my best play because there's no chance that he's gonna go for the ice punch this early on in the match as he actually turns out to have stealth rocks on his mega swamper which I was not expecting at all which means now there's a good chance that that fortress is rapid spin volt switch with t-spikes and spikes which is kind of good because he can't still touch my bug Lesnar but now I'm in a very tough scenario and I have to go for the rapids in here the fact that he still has the Gudra meant that I really didn't feel comfortable in going for the drop kick and I'm really happy I didn't because he could have easily got a, a zap zipper boost here potentially or he's probably hydration because he's on a rain team either way though I'm able to get rid of the layer T spikes and get rid of the stealth rocks if I can keep up the pressure I can hopefully prevent him from trying to get up another layer of T-Spikes, which means my Buzzwool and my Raikou are gonna have a much easier time in this matchup. Unfortunately, as long as he's got that Swampert in the rain and he's got this Gudra, my Raikou really is not gonna be doing anything at all. But the bright side to it is, is that once I do get rid of those two Mons, Raikou could definitely be my win condition because like I said, I'm a sub calm mindset. So I U-turn directly into my Mega Steelix here as he actually turns out to have the curse which I was not expecting. I thought he was just going to go 
for like a Draco Meteor or an Ice Beam or something along those lines. And the fact that he has Curse is actually a little bit scary because my Mega Silix has just become even more important in this game. Mega Silix has a lot of pressure on it because I need it to check and deal with that Zerker Trees and I need it to check the Tornadus. And also if I can try and get up my rocks again, if he spins them away, that's going to be absolutely huge. So here I just go for the Roar. Honestly, I thought he would switch directly on now into a Swamper here. So I was hoping to just kind of roar him around to try and rack up the rocks damage. Maybe roar him into the Tornadus so he could take that extra stealth rock damage but as I roar him of course into the swamper I'm gonna be forced to switch out here as I do make the safe switch again back into my Serena I really thought he was gonna try and ice beam this turn but depending on damage rolls I might have been able to take two ice punches if I remember the damage count correctly so Either way, Serena was a relatively safe play here, plus the rain is now gone and this Serena does have a good amount of speed EVs. I don't remember if I do outspeed Swampert or not, but either way, Serena still is going to come in very, very handy in this game. So I basically have to go for the synthesis here. While the switch in the fortress was very obvious and U-turning could have also been a play, I absolutely need the Serena so I can check that Swampert. Like Serena is probably my only and best switch in to that Swampert, and Swampert in the rain is absolutely terrifying. Mega Swampert in the rain is absolutely terrifying. So I do go for the synthesis here as he brings in the fortress. I almost expected him to want to go for the Volt Switch here because me U-turning into my Buzzwool wouldn't have been entirely too bad of a play on my part to have done because that just gives me another free substitute. But because I expected him to try and go for Lair Spikes here or just go for the Bolt Switch in general, I decided to just bring back in, uh, not bring back in, but bring in my Darmanitan. And since the rain is gone, I'm just going to click Flare Blitz here. His Swampert's not going to live too. And the Primarina is actually 2 AKO by Scarfed Sheer Force Flare Blitz as well on the Switch. And so at this point, he basically had to choose a sack unless he wanted to try and bring in his Gruger, which I still could have done respectable damage to that. As now comes the Primarina. Like I said, I have no switchings to this monster because it's a good chance he can easily get a brain later in the match and the fact that I absolutely need to get off damage on this Primarina I'm gonna stay in go for the flare blitz do a solid 51% the fact that I only did about 50% means that he's max HP and not running speed so that's nice to know as I can now bring in my Latios I am soul Dew, but even with soul Dew, I will definitely be able to knock out a max HP Primarina here not to mention that he really has no safe switch in to my Latios anymore now that he lost his fortress and because he lost his fortress as soon as I get my stealth rocks back up they will be here to stay for the remainder of the match this also means that he does not have T-spikes to poison my subcom mind Raikou or poison my Buzzwall which is absolutely amazing for me in this game so I'm gonna go for the Draco here I thought that maybe he would try to switch into the Primarina but even if he did that I could have just gone for the side shock next turn to knock him out. So at this point, I just clicked Draco and I was pretty sure I got a KO this turn or the following turn. As in comes the Tornadus, I really, really should have gone for the Draco here. I, the switching out here was probably a questionable play because it was almost a 50 50 play, but hindsight's 20 20, honestly, and I should have just gone for the Draco Meteor to get rid of this thing because that means that he wouldn't have been able to get the rain back up for that Mega Swamper, which is still a giant, giant threat. So thinking that he would just go ahead and hard switch directly out here, I actually just go for the Stealth Rocks. That's the whole reason why I switched into my torn into my Steelix in the first place. And this is where me not seeing that he had U-turn comes into play because I'm thinking, okay, now he's gonna hard switch in the Swampert. I can live one adamant ice punch at full HP, but he goes for the U-turn. And that's why you should always pay attention, guys, because now I'm in a bit of a tough spot because if he gets two absolutely high damage rolls, he can easily 2 a KO my Serena on the switch in. So expecting him to Ice Punch here, I actually make a bit of a middle ground play by bringing in my Buzzwall. Honestly, Buzzwall doesn't really do anything else in this battle. I don't think I knock out max HP Primarina at 50% because I'm not max attack. And I know I can chew one hit from the Swampert and chip it down. Tornadus is going to knock me out anyways, and I can't really do much to a Gudra. A Gudra can just curse up in front of my face. And if he plays around me focus punching, then things are going to get even worse for me. 
So I do a solid bit of damage with Leech's life. It looks like maybe I can live another waterfall. I actually really wanted to switch into Serena here, but I thought that that maybe might have been a little too obvious because he didn't want to try and waste his rain turns, which I could have switched into Serena here, but that just means I would have had to leave Buzzwa's death fodder, and if I had stacked it off the circuit trees, that just gives him a free beast boost, so that's not going to be really good for me either. But I do now get a safe switch back into my Serena here, and he actually does end up going for the Ice Punch. I was so, so close to clicking U-Turn here. You guys have no idea how close I was to U-Turning here. There was no way U-Turn was going to knock out Swamper there. And if I had U-Turn there, there was a good chance Swamper probably picked up another KO on my team. So... Definitely tropical, tropical kicking there was my best play because down goes the giant ass threat that is Swampert. The only other kind of issue at this point is going to be... Uh, no, did he sack off the Gujar? He's got Swamp... No, he's got Primarina, Circuit Trees, and Tornadoes. So at this point, it looks like maybe I can win with Raikou. Unfortunately, he does get a beast boost here. And a plus one Dazzling Gleam does about 50% to my Raikou. And there's a chance that this could easily be Scarf. So I decided to bring in my Steelix, which Steelix has been putting in the work in this match as I will be able to just safely go for the Earthquake and knock him out here unless he has the Focus Sash. And then it turns out that he's not even Scarf. So I could have probably brought in Raikou and gone for the Calm Mind because I would have outsped him and then probably just won with my Raikou at this point. But hey, I want to show off Mega Steelix. So I'm able to get, up, get the KO here against the circuit trees as in comes the Primarina. I actually thought about switching right into my Latios here, but that honestly might have been a little bit too risky because he could have very well just gone for the Moonblast to try and predict me, or he might have thought he would have knocked me out at this range of HP. Either way though, Steelix put in a lot of work in this game, and I'm very happy about that as I can now bring in my Raikou. At this point, his last two Pokemon are the Primarina and the Tornadus, both of which do not outspeed me, and both of which are in range of where Thunderbolt will easily knock them out as down goes. The Primarina Tornadus cannot do anything to me. Like I said, he cannot speed me, and I will be able to finish him off with Thunderbolt as he comes in this turn. And very good game to Deneki. I really thought that I was going to lose this game, man. Rain has a pretty decent matchup against this team, but I was luckily able to play around things uh, almost correctly and pull out the victory. So if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to hammer arm that like button down below. Let me know what you think about Mega Steelix, what you think about the UU tier in general and in Rain. Honestly, Circuit Trees has kind of been underwhelming even in UU, which is kind of weird because you would think that in UU it would be pretty decent with its humongous, humongous special attack, but... I don't know. I guess we'll have to see how things go. But yeah, either way, hope you guys did enjoy two videos on the end screen. With that being said, I will see you all tomorrow. Later, but Cause my brain and heart are both tied in the knot And this hinders me from flying a lot This causing me to show no emotion But when I said I cared, I wasn't joking But I guess it's too late for me to become broken But now, I'm living with no more pain, tears, or hoping I'm just coasting Yeah, I said I'm coasting No more pain, tears, and hoping For real